Hi everyone, it's Sandy and today I am filming my February wrap-up. I only read four books this month. Three of them were actually ebooks. One was a physical book and two of the books that I read were from the library. The total number of pages that I read was 1,648. My average rating was a 3.25. So it wasn't the best reading month quality-wise and quantity-wise. The first book that I read in February is The Girl King by Mimi Yu and I did check out an ebook of this from the library. This is an Own Voices Asian-inspired fantasy told in three point of view. The first character is Lu. She is a princess and her throne was stolen from her by her male cousin. Then we have Min Yi, who is Lu's younger sister. And lastly, we have Nak, who is the last surviving wolf shapeshifter. Nak and Lu end up building an alliance with one another so that Lu can reclaim her throne while Min's hidden power awakens. I have a lot of thoughts regarding this book. I do want to give a trigger warning for sexual harassment, attempted rape, violence, and addiction. I was really looking forward to reading this, but I ended up being slightly disappointed. The premise of the story was very promising, but while reading the story, I realized that I never actually became invested in the characters or the plot. I love the idea of a princess trying to reclaim her throne, but along the way, Lu just made a lot of really impulsive and dumb decisions. I felt like she was a very generic, badass, fierce female character. Her ego and short temper would constantly result in her saying something or doing something that would worsen the situation that she and knock her in. There is a bit of a romance that blossoms between Lu and Nock and honestly I just didn't care for it. It did start off pretty well but later on in the book I felt like the romance was just forced and rushed and I didn't like that. Min, who is Lu's younger sister on the other hand, is very naive and boring. She is constantly pushed around by others and this male cousin that has stolen Lu's throne, his name is Set. It seems that Min starts to fall for Set which is kind of disgusting considering that he's her cousin. I don't remember how far removed they are but still. I just felt like the love that she had for him was very instant and it did not make sense at all like there's nothing about him that I could see her liking. Set is an awful character he's power hungry and I just don't see how Min could be into him and like I mentioned in the synopsis there is this plot line of Min discovering that she has powers and I wish this whole magic thing was explained a little bit more because it was just very confusing. I'm sure that things will be explained a little bit more in the second book but it just left me wondering like why did Min have powers in the first place? What makes her special? Based on certain revelations that occur in the story, I feel like it would have made more sense for Lu to have the powers rather than Min, but that's just not how the story went. I do have to admit that even though I didn't like Min's character, I enjoyed seeing how her sense of agency has developed throughout the story, because at the beginning of the story, she's just pushed around by other people, she does what she's told, but by the end of the story, she takes control of certain things, and I like that. So overall, the characters felt basic, and due to the lack of world building, I felt like not much happened in the story. It mostly consisted of Lu and Nox spending many and many pages just traveling and staying out of trouble, but knowing Lu and her impulsive behavior, she's constantly the one getting them in trouble in the first place. While Min discovers she has power, she barely does anything with it until the very end. So unfortunately, this was not the most enjoyable read and I ended up giving it a 2 out of 5 stars. The next book that I finished in February is The Stars and the Blackness Between Them by Janata Petrus. This is a debut YA contemporary following two black girls, Audrey and Mabel. At the start of the story, Audrey is living in Trinidad and she is caught with her secret girlfriend by her very strict and religious mother. As a result, she is sent to live in America with her father. In America, this is where she reunites with Mabel, who is the daughter of her father's friend. Since Audrey's dad lives in America, she has traveled there a few times to be with him and spend time with him, so she has met Mabel before, but now that she's officially living in America, they begin to spend a lot more time together, and they also begin to develop romantic feelings for each other. However, things take a bit of a turn when Mabel gets answers to why she hasn't been feeling very well recently, and so throughout the story, she's dealing with a lot of health issues. With this book, I do want to give content warnings for homophobia phobia, police brutality, suicidal thoughts, overdose, and terminal illness. This is a very character-driven story. The story is told in both Audrey and Mabel's point of view, and I did really enjoy these characters. I really enjoyed being in their shoes and reading about their perspectives of the world and how they interact with others. I really love Mabel and Audrey, and I absolutely love their relationship with each other. However, I feel like the author does a lot more telling than showing. So while we know that Audrey and Mabel are spending a lot of time together, we don't really see that, and so I feel like we're 
are missing out on seeing their feelings for each other develop. And I definitely feel like throughout this entire story, we would often hear about certain things happening, but we wouldn't actually get to read about it. For instance, there's a scene where Audrey and one of her friends are planning a walkout, and then all of a sudden the walkout happens, but we don't get to read about it. And I wish we got to read more about that. The way the story is told made me feel very disconnected from the characters and what was happening to them. I do want to acknowledge a review that I read from Jesse, aka Bowties and Books. In their review, they mentioned that the story is told in an oratory format, which is the tradition of Afro and Caribbean storytelling. I'm not sure if that type of storytelling has to do with the author doing a lot more telling rather than showing, but that is something that I wanted to acknowledge and bring up. I already mentioned that I really loved Audrey and Mabel and I love seeing their individual growth. I also really love the family aspect of the story. Overall, I did love that the story was a story about love, both platonically and romantically between two black girls. And that's just something that we don't have a lot of stories about. Even though I didn't love the story as much as I hoped to, this is still one that I would absolutely recommend. I did end up rating the story a three out of five stars. The third book that I finished in February is The Bells by Danielle Clayton. In this world, people are born gray and there are bells that have the ability to make people beautiful. And so the story follows Camelia, she is one out of like six or seven upcoming bells and she wants to become the favorite. If you are a bell chosen as a favorite, then you live in the royal palace and you serve the royal family. Camelia is desperate for that role and eventually she gets it. However, once she arrives at the palace, there's a lot of things that she wasn't quite prepared for. She starts dealing with this princess named Sophia. Sophia is the type of character who's very narcissistic. She gets what she wants and she doesn't care who gets hurt in the process. So she starts making a lot of unreasonable demands to Camelia and Camelia also starts to realize a bunch of shady and weird things going on. Out of all the books I read, this is the one that I enjoyed the most. I thought it was a very interesting world. I really enjoyed this book. I had a lot of fun reading it. I was also surprised by how dark certain parts of the book were. I do want to give a content warning for sexual assault and harassment. I like that in this world, being attracted or being in a relationship with someone of the same sex is like normal. But at the same time, this book does have the bury your gaze trope. So the only people that die in the story are people who are in the LGBTQIA+ community. This book deals heavily with body image and beauty standards, so there's definitely some minor fat shaming in here and unhealthy views on beauty and body image. I do feel like the magic system is a little bit underdeveloped. We definitely see Camellia put her bell ability to use a lot throughout the story, but I didn't quite have a clear grasp of how her powers actually worked. But I do think it's very interesting to see some of the different aspects that bells can manipulate, such as mood and temper. So bells don't just physically manipulate how you look but they can manipulate your internal mood and temper and I think that's really fascinating. I also really enjoy trying to figure out what's happening behind closed doors. So in this world there are like generations of bells but I'm not quite sure how many years apart they are. I don't know if there's like a new set of bells every single year. I felt like that wasn't entirely clear but basically Camellia and her sisters are the latest generation of bells. So when it comes to the choosing ceremony or whatever it's called, I can't remember the actual name of it, each bell is assigned to a certain location or tea house. And so these tea houses are scattered throughout the country and that is where people go to receive beauty services. So I really enjoyed learning about what's happening behind closed doors to the older bells who aren't actively working. I think that was really interesting and I'm really interested in learning more about that in the next book. This story was definitely a lot darker than I thought it was going to be, but I actually really like that. And I'm really interested in seeing where the story goes in the second book. Overall, this was an entertaining read. I got through it really quickly and I would rate it a four out of five stars. And the very last book that I finished in February is Anna K, A Love Story by Jenny Lee. This is basically a YA reimagining of Leo Tolstoy's Anna Karenina. I actually have never read Anna Karenina and so I didn't really know the backstory to it. The story is told in third person point of view and it follows a lot of different characters, but it does center around this character named Anna K. She is half Korean from a very wealthy family. She supposedly has the perfect boyfriend that she's been dating for years when one day she meets this dude named Count Vronsky and immediately they are attracted to one another. And so the story kind of goes from there. I do want to mention that there is cheating involved in the story. There's a lot of drug use. A drug overdose does occur. There's also an animal death. And there's a huge tragedy that happens at the very end, which is very similar to the original story, Anna Karenina. Even though I haven't read it, I did read the author's note, so I know what happens at the end of Anna Karenina. This was definitely a story that I wanted to be reading at the time that I read it because it's just full of drama and angst and it's very fun and entertaining as well. Honestly, I think it's fun to live vicariously off 
off wealthy and privileged teenagers. It's honestly wild seeing all the things that these characters would spend their money on. I do have an entire reading vlog dedicated to reading this book, so if you're interested in hearing more of my thoughts, definitely check out the reading vlog. This story is also very character driven. There's essentially no plot aside from this romance that's happening between Anna and Vronsky, but that was like the main thing I didn't like about the story. I honestly did not care about Anna or Vronsky and their relationship. It was just very frustrating to read about. I felt like their attraction to one another was just lust and not love. I didn't really feel any type of connection or chemistry that they had with each other. I do like that the story touches on issues of racism and privilege. I really enjoyed seeing bits and pieces of Anna's relationship with her dad and how her Korean culture comes into play. Even though the story does focus a lot on romantic relationships, Anna does have a brother named Steven and I really like seeing their sibling relationship throughout the story. The story definitely has like a crazy rich Asian slash gossip girl vibe. So if you're into that, definitely check it out. Overall, I would give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So those are all the books that I read in February. If you have read any of them, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Bye!